perfect hello my name is Issa Winnick I'm an aspiring film and television actress and I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew and I had a wonderful experience in this interview he has a great talk show I highly suggest that you look into it as you can learn many interesting things and learn about him even more Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Key Fanjin Network. As you heard from the recommendation, we have a beautiful guest here only on the Key Fanjin Network. With that being said, I have the top 15 questions I want to ask you. But the first one I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about yourself and are you a study nerd or party animal? <laughs> oh my, great question. <laughs> So uh, first time I say, um, hello, my name is Issa Winak, and I'm an actress and aspiring producer slash screenwriter who's eager about entering the film industry. Uh, currently, I'm represented in the uh, in the U.S. and in the U.K., and I'm uh, L.A. and N.Y. based, so I travel between the two. And I would say my uh, favorite type of genres I would like to perform in are definitely adventure, action, um, horror, and historical. I find I have a skill set that is set in, I would say, a lot of historical fighting. I am a sword fighter and I also know martial arts. Um, and beyond that, I'm, I like to consider myself an adventurous person. And I love to, and it's funny that you asked me if I'm a study and if I'm a party animal or a, if I study, because I like to do a little bit of both. So it depends on the day. But, but if I would have to choose one over the other, I think party animal. <laughs> No, absolutely. You know, it's always great to have fun and think outside the box because being a carbon copy of someone who you idolize is kind of like, yeah, that's great. You can copy the person, but they want to see yourself because as an, a professional actress, what the biggest thing is to connect with the audience is being real and it's uncensored. So if you're trying to be full of BS or full of crap, they're going to see right through it and by why are we wasting time with this? This is stupid. But if you're real and authentic, then they're going to support you for it because you're the real article. Yeah, indeed. That is, that is true. I feel that's what's important because especially um, media personalities or people who are in the public sphere, uh, they have a developed an audience of people that like them for who they portray to be. So I believe it's important to be very clear, transparent, and honest. And even if the, even like as a media personality or a, I would say a public figure, if you're having a bad day, you can be honest with your fans as long as you don't do it in a rude way or anything. But it's always true and I feel important to be yourself because people will appreciate you for that. I agree with you 100%. Now, I do have some great ideas I would love to talk to you about off the air. But what, while we're on the subject... You mentioned you're in the city, so is there any acting classes or acting studios you would recommend for anyone who lives in the city? Oh, dear. Uh, in New York City in particular, there's a few acting classes, and I don't say studios. Um, I personally had courses in, I have taken a few master classes with the Stanislavski School, um, the Stanislavski Institute, pardon me. Uh, the Barrow Group is also really good. MN Acting Studio I've tried and I really enjoyed them. They also have coaching sessions. Um, and beyond that, uh, regarding networking and business sessions, I have taken classes with Actors Connection and I found you could not only take acting classes there, but also meet people, whether it's casting directors, directors, writers, producers, actively in an industry. And uh, I believe that is currently all in my mind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, the reason I bring her while we're on subject in New York, I'm working on my 10 year anniversary and I would love to have you be a part of it. It would ever be on Zoom. Right now, I'm making a list of people. We can talk more about this off the air. Making a list of people because right now, obviously, I'm going to date myself. I'm only 35 and um, I feel like, you know, an old person to you. But the reason I bring up, do you ever feel like you're a pinball? Because you go to one group of people, they're like, they're asking you about this. And then you go to another group, they're like, they're asking you about that. So you're going back and forth and back and forth. What I give me, okay, that was sort of a horrible example of being a pinball. <laughs> the reason I ask that 
is because right now I'm making a list of people who would be interested to go to my 10 year anniversary. But at the same time, the places that I'm reaching out to, they're like, how many people? So it's it's pinball. How many people? Where's it going to be? How many people? Where's it going to be? It's like, hey, shut up. <laughs> it's So I'm going to do it my way. I'm saying, here's a list of people. Once I hit a certain number, then I can reach out to the place because I don't like lying to people and I don't like wasting people's time. So it's really important to make a list. Now, how that's directed at you, if you're having a party or an anniversary, would you pick the place first or would you make a list first? Oh, dear. I believe I'll make a list first because from there, I know what kind of crowd am I looking for? And I would invite, I would ask the people, are they available? And then based on gauging uh, how many people are available and are interested at that certain time, I would decide the place because if I decide the place first, I'm not sure will everyone commute there, if everyone's comfortable there. Uh, whereas if I decide the people first, I know if it's something more informal, like a rest, like um, even at my house, or if it's something a little more formal, like a catered event or at a bigger, like at a restaurant, maybe if they don't want to eat, maybe we could go out to the park or something. So I like to determine people first. No, absolutely. So the first question I want to ask you is what attracted you to start your career? Hmm. What? Hmm. To start my career? Well, ever since I was about, well, ever since I was born or uh, through my memory, uh, ever since I started developing long-term memories, I'd say, uh, I always loved stories. And it's funny because um, some people say like, oh, stories, they're just like, their entertainment maybe they're not as meaningful in society like doing some sort of like true labor but I always found it amazing how stories could just make you forget about your current reality and you're so immersed into them that that becomes your reality for that one moment like you could visualize it you could see it, you could sense it and those moments are the moments that inspire us and show us how um I would say how much amazing potential we have but how much amazing potential the world has so ever growing up with this idea of storytelling, I always loved to tell stories myself and show people. And like, it was amazing just to see them like being taken away by it. And I love to express that and just see through the eyes of these characters. And I felt growing up, that's in a way what I want to do. And if there's an occupation for that, surprisingly, acting suffices that. So I'm happy I could contribute that energy, that um, that eagerness to tell the story and just show it through my perspective as a character um, to other people and just seeing that like the fact that you could take them away whether it's a, a dramatic or a comedic performance is for me amazing because that means wow I just I move with them and that could influence them hopefully in a positive way. Now you mentioned that you're also in the city not to impose on you you don't have to tell us where you live but where you're based in the city are there certain landmarks or certain places you've gone to that inspired you? You know, like, was it the World Trade Towers? Or was it um, the Intrepid? Was it, hell, you know, was it Woodbury Commons, the second biggest mall in North America? <laughs> you know, I know that's not in New York City, but, you know, still, if you go to certain landmarks in certain places, it gives you this certain imagination of, if I can stand here, I can stand anywhere. Hmm. I guess there was a few places. I would say, um, it's funny, there is a, a studio in Brooklyn. I believe it's called Steiner Studios. And I remember once I played a small, like very small character uh, on a project. I believe it was even a background role because it was just when I started. And I remember walking into the set and seeing how big it is it's just ginormous like they had um like whole replicas of like hallways and houses inside and it was just huge and I was thinking wow like they could build anything here and anything could be a reality almost in there and I was thinking like wow if when I get older I would love to be a person to be part of like those realities and those different stories and uh be here more often because I feel if I got here now and I'm like small and I'm younger then I could definitely do that later and do it on a bigger scale. So definitely like 
the Steiner Studios in Brooklyn. That was the definitely a, a very big landmark for me. And even though it's maybe not as significant in my career and my like point in time, I feel it was. No, I agree. And I was actually interviewed on the Manhattan Neighborhood of Broadcast. And I will, I will definitely put a good word in for you because the more experience you have and the better it works. And hey, you help me, I help you. It's a win-win. Not saying I'm taking advantage of this way, and I just like to give. No, so, it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's like that. It's a talk show. It's like people ask me, how did you get people to be on your show? Well, I like to be remembered as someone who gave someone an opportunity. Because a lot of opportunities were, were never given to me. I have to earn them. So if I give people opportunities, then it'd be like, one thing I remember about Keith Andrews is he was a great guy. He talks a lot. He talks out of, he talks out of, I can't speak. He talks out of his ass. He, he thinks he's this big, wonderful thing. But the one thing is, I am in, I am professional, but I like giving people opportunities to say, this is what we're doing. This is the message. And I want you to be completely honest. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your honest opinion reading it? What made you say yes? And how do you feel now? Hmm. I would say originally when uh, I, I remember we connected over LinkedIn and I remember you reached out and I looked at your things and I was like, wow, like I personally value initiative. And when people go and uh, they're confident in, in their work, and they go out and they reach out to others because I've done that and that offered me opportunities. So seeing that, I was just, I, I admire that. No matter in what situation or place we are, where we come from, going after what we want is very significant because that's how you get what you want and live the life of your dreams, I would say. So uh, at first, I, was, I admired that. So I feel that what you give out, I always believe the fact that what you give out, you receive. So if you... If you go out of your way and you ask honestly and eagerly, then I believe one should receive that. And I remember at the time, I looked through your things and I really, really liked that you were genuine, you were honest, and you're doing your best. So I thought, why not? Why not interview? It's an interesting opportunity, a, an opportunity to meet one professional through the other. Um, and I feel now I'm, I'm, I am I'm would say I'm, I'm happy I took it because it's a great conversation. Not only am I learning about you, I'm learning about myself. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I agree to 100%. It's a good message. It's a good cause. Plus, you make a new friend out of it. The one thing I do want to apologize is when I don't do my interviews as a way, my disability shows more. So that's why I hesitate. So I do apologize for that. <laughs> it's okay. It's natural to hesitate. So I'm not I'm not offended. <laughs> so the next question I want to ask you is, are you in um, college or high school? It's funny. I'm actually in university right now. I'm on my last year. I look very young for my age. So, <laughs> No, absolutely. And, and you look great, by the way. And so the re reason I ask is, what is your opinion about fraternities? Because you mentioned you go to universities. Do, are you a fraternity type person? Or are you like, you know, I'm here to do what I need to and get out? You know, it's funny. I considered a fraternity or like sorority, but I never, I never really found something that interested in me in particular because I'm a part of many clubs and I met many friends like that. I never thought about fraternity more because like, like I mentioned, like it, I thought of more clubs and ways to engage with people through projects. So I would say I'm rather not a fraternity person. This is gonna sound like a stupid question, but are you a fan of Family Guide? Ooh. Uh, my cousins would watch it, but I unfortunately don't watch it. I'm familiar somewhat with the humor. I I would say I'm neutral about it because yeah, it's there. The jokes are funny. I appreciate the screenwriting, but uh, I was never I was never a, a watcher like an avid watcher of it. For me, I'm more of a Fisarama fan. <laughs> I, I see. But there's two jokes I want to tell you real fast. For Fisarama, I'm like, yeah, you know, Fry's talking, but he's in the future. Oh, I went to college. Yeah, but everyone knows that 21st Century College was an expensive daycare center. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> A little bit, but I, I see where it comes from. And uh, and maybe you maybe we could agree. <laughs> but I would, say, I would say my university definitely taught me a lot, but 
sometimes it's it's considered it depending on who you have in class. <laughs> I agree with you. And now for uh, Family Guide, my joke would be uh, there's a skit where Peter's like, oh, I want to be stay away from those fraternities and they open the doors. And everyone's like piled on top of each other. It's like, Meg, run. They'd never let you leave the pile. It's a trap. I've been in here for two weeks. <laughs> oh, no, I see. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I've, I've known that for, like fraternities, sororities, sometimes um, like their, their process of initiation or sometimes their methods are questionable. Yeah. I've never really experienced anything like that, but I know it often does resort to bullying and often like, like I would say almost like cult like mentalities, depending on where you go, of course, but I'm not too sure myself because I haven't experienced it. But hopefully that situation does not occur to you or like anyone as such in the future with fraternities. <laughs> you know, everyone does haze and but if, for anyone who wants to see a great cartoon, it's now I'm dating myself. I don't know. I'm 35. I need to stop saying that. <laughs> a couple of years ago, about 16 years, I think it was, no, 23 years ago, whatever, how many years ago, 23 years ago, there was an MTV series called Undergrads. I was sending you a clip. It's really good. It's about the guy going for, um, to college for four years, and it's about what it's like to be the freshman. Unfortunately, they canceled it. And it was supposed to come back, but it's really good. I would recommend it. But the other question I want to ask you is, what is in the horizon for you? And what projects are you working on? Oh, dear. Well, a few things. Currently, uh, my manager and agent are sending me out for quite big auditions, which I'm very excited about and very thankful for. Like, they're really working hard to for me to develop connections and be seen by major casting directors and different offices and people. So I would say, um, like many actors know, that it's often one audition away. So I'm uh, eager and ready to present myself for those opportunities. But in the meantime, I'm currently working on a few projects, some are NDA. I'm working on a feature film and I'm working on, uh, it's funny, a music video uh, in which they need a performing actress. And uh, I'm helping produce that music video as well, as well as another short film, which is quite exciting because it's a um, sort of fighting short film. And beyond that, I would say just a few, I would say networking events that I'm attending. Uh, whether it's with a few casting directors, directors, writers, producers, getting my foot in the door and understanding how uh, the industry works. So I would say overall, I have a little bit on my plate for now. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that that is that is what I'm currently up to. Well, you, you can do laps around me because it sounds like you, you do, and I'm not kissing your butt or anything, you do have a bright future. You oh. know, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you do. And the reason I can, I like to have fun on the Key Fans you Network, make jokes, because it isn't just, you know, I was told who do I admire, what shows do I want to copy. I'm a big wrestling fan. I like Bill O'Reilly, even though there's a long story about that. He's a, he was a fake. <laughs> but I like to Bill O'Reilly. I like Bill Maher. So I try to accommodate, you know, comedy serious seriousness funny stories and it's about being real if you're being real you connect with the audience and as i said in the beginning they're gonna know if you're fake or if you're putting a mask on but the one thing that i kind of caught my interest i saw your demo video you were on war and order svu so the question i want to ask you is what was it like working with the cast and will you be back on uh, War and Order? Oh, dear. Well, it was a great experience. I feel I learned a lot from it. It was an early long shoot, but I really, I enjoyed it. And seeing how the lead cast uh, interacts and how they like, how they work professionally was definitely a lot to learn. I learned from because it was just so interesting to see how they interact their seasoned professionals and what their daily in a way life looks like on set and for me just to see that I was just so excited and it was a big scene it was like a school shooting scene 
but it was um I remember being close to them. It was so interesting. I'm like, oh, I saw them on TV, and there they are. They're normal people. <laughs> um, and it was it was definitely an experience that I will cherish because it was one of my first, I would say, bigger roles or roles featuring me on TV. I'd say because it was a very massive role. But I remember I was actually there with one of my twin with my twin sister, <laughs> and it was um. It was definitely like a great experience for a learning experience for both of us. And regarding Law and Order, I know that they are still rolling and they are still auditioning. So I don't have anything in particular on the horizon, but I am a I'm acquainted with that casting director. Uh, hey, maybe you can put a good word in for me. <laughs> and, and, and you don't have to. <laughs> I'm just saying. I always fought about you know being an actor, but my brother always says you're on set for long hours they may use you and they may not use you but hey, never say never for reason for me to do the show is say i never went to college and i'm not qualified to do certain things but interviewed 1000 actually i can tell you right now i have a bunch of these you're actually you know, give me one second should have done this from the start episode 1015 so if Someone who's on the spectrum of being, you know, wink, wink, retarded, can do 1,015 episodes, then this should definitely show you he's capable of doing anything. But this is not about me, this is about you. Do you have any funny stories you like to share? And this is one question I like to have fun with everyone. If you were to do a play or be in a film, and someone asks you, would you ever do a human pyramid for that film? Would you do it? Oh, dear. So uh, the human pyramid question, could you just tell me a little bit more what you mean by human pyramid? <laughs> oh, you know, a lot of people like it's cheerleaders and circus. People just go together and they make a shape of a pyramid, pretty much. Oh, I see. Hmm. Depending on, I, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, why not? I'm, I'm rather light, so I would rather not be at the top of the pyramid because I would be crushed. But I think I could sit somewhere by the top. Why not? <laughs> so, I love yeah, that. I would say. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no worries. I was, like I said, I would say, why not? Yes. <laughs> I love that stuff. I'm a loser. <laughs> no worries. It's okay. And for the Key Fans Network, we have tons of great videos. And a couple of ones I like to work on you, work with you on is I do a lot of fan-made voiceovers for Dumbo and Jumbo Bug. I do the Human Pyramid Challenge. So my network isn't just about the talk show and disabilities. That is the main focus, of course. But I have side projects of saying for the younger fans who like, well, what is it in there that they're going to like? There's like wrestling, there's like circus acts. So there's everything and everything. And I would love to work with you on that. But to quit, wrapping up, I'm going to pass this show over to you. It's the last five minutes. Was there anything you wanted to talk about? Any funny stories and pranks you would love to share? Hmm. I would say funny stories in particular. Well, this is funny because it relates to my university and having a twin sister. What's interesting is that when I first, well, we go to the same university and we hadn't told people that we're twins because we just, we live our, we go to our own classes. I would say live our own lives in a way, but at the end of the day, we meet together. And oftentimes when I have classes in university, my professors and people would see me and then they would see my sister. <laughs> Many times I was asked, why don't you wave back to us when we wave to you? Or have you changed your clothes very quickly? Or, oh, like, I just saw you walk. How'd you walk there that fast? And I need to go ahead and explain myself that I have a twin. And many people didn't believe me until we are actually came once to, like, uh, when we had enough time, we would go to classes together. And people were mind blown. And it was just so funny. <laughs> and we never liked to pull pranks because we just, we didn't want to be mean or anything. Um, or like uh, be, be too mischievous but it was so funny and uh, <laughs> it was great because I, it gave us a, a twin reputation and they would call say like oh we're almost like clones and such so it was um, it, it's definitely something funny it's interesting being a twin and many people ask so do you have like telepathy or something <laughs> and uh, yeah it's funny because 
knowing each other as twins, you know yourself so well, so you know the other person, the other twin really well. So we can almost predict our behaviors. So we can say we almost have this telepathy, maybe like 70% accurate. So that's that's an interesting fact about us. <laughs> no, absolutely. Now, what is your next, and you mentioned you did some projects earlier, but what is the biggest thing that you're working on right now? Ooh, I would say it's this feature film. It's an independent feature film, so it's not a big studio production, but it will be distributed among Amazon, and they're getting. It's going to be going into certain festivals that are, I know longer scale, like for feature films. Um, they're pitching it to many places, and I believe they also have a team in LA that will work on it. So I'm I'm very excited about that because uh, it, it's going to be a big opportunity, and I hope that it's um. I hope that I do it justice in my performance and I hope I serve it in the best way that I can. So I would say that's currently a big project that I'm working on and I'm, I'm very, I'm quite excited about. No, absolutely. And if you're interested, maybe we can interview the cast and do like a special episode about it. Oh, hmm. I'll definitely look into it. I'll ask them. I'll ask the director. Maybe I feel after it's uh, released, I feel, I feel people would be interested. Absolutely. Hashtag absolutely. Now I do have a I do have a couple of questions for you off the air, but wrapping up, this will be played on all social medias. It will be on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. For us to do a part two, our goal is to reach a hundred and more views. Definitely leave a comment. I'd like to know what you liked, what questions we should talk about next time. But wrapping up, I hope I made a good impression on you. It was an honor and privilege to have me as a guest. And until we meet again, catch you later. Thank you and have a good night.